Hey you guys, welcome to episode 3 of Yu-Gi-Oh! Weekly, June 22. This happens every Wednesday, so let's just get into it. First off, I want to ask how your guys' week has been. As for me, it's always hectic. Last week I started working out again, going to the gym. I'm trying to go five days a week now because I used to go all the time and then I kind of dropped out of doing that. So yeah, using this summer to get back to what I'm doing. And like I'm doing a whole program and everything, just making sure I'm working out correctly. I know what I'm doing. I'm not wasting my time. Hopefully we get some results pretty soon. So yeah, how has your guys' weeks been? Just leave that in the comments down below. I'm always curious to know. So let's get into some Yu-Gi-Oh shit. So first off, this Friday on the 24th in Japan, they're releasing the Yu-Gi-Oh Duel Monsters Anime Complete Guide Millennium Memory. And this book comes with a promo card, which I wanted to take a look at real quick. It's Divine Serpent Ge, or in Japanese, Joshin Ge. So this guy was used by darts in the anime, if you kind of remember in season four, with the Orichalco stuff. Darts used this against Yugi while he was using the three legendary knights, you know, Hermos, Curtius, um, Tamias, and all that. So yeah, let's just take a look at him. He's a reptile, so that's pretty dope. We don't got a lot of good reptiles. His effect is, can't be normal or set, must be special summoned by its own effect, can't be special summoned by other ways. If a monster you control is destroyed by your opponent's attack or card effect, you can pay half your life points to special summon him from your hand. Can be targeted by card effects if he attacks an opponent's monster. That monster's effects are negated. Also, its attack becomes half its original attack. It's crazy. And once per chain, during damage calculation in either turn, if this card battles, you can make this card's attack become equal to the original attack of the monster on the field with the highest original attack. So it's a lot to take in. I remember in the show his attack was virtually infinity, if I remember correctly, but yeah. He's an okay card, like the only way you could get him out is if one of your things are destroyed and you have to pay half your life points. But whenever he attacks, he'll always pretty much have the higher attack. And also, he's kind of usable since he can't be targeted by card effects, which is pretty much like a staple effect now if a card or a certain archetype has to be good. You cannot, you gotta negate effects. You gotta make sure you're indestructible. That's just that's just a thing now. It'll probably take a while before we get this in the TCG. I mean, he's a pretty dope looking card. I can see people getting him for nostalgia purposes and all that, but I don't really see people playing him too much. So yeah, Divine Serpent Get or Joshin Get. And I also blanked out on this. I did not know this was gonna be released. The Duelist Pack, Rivals of the Pharaoh. This is crazy. I totally blanked out on this, but yeah, in the OCG, this is called Do This Pack Fair's Memories, and I did take a look at the set list, so it's pretty much, it comes with some pretty cool reprints like Demok, Thousand Eyes Restrict, all the blue eyes stuff that we got in the saga of the Blue Eyes White Dragon deck. Its main theme is the Silent Magician Swordsman level support, so we got Silent Magician and Silent Swordsman, but not a specific level, and we got some more spells and traps to support them. But the three cards that caught my eye were Tribute Burial, Neutron Blast, and Lullaby of Obedience. So let's just take a look at these three cards real quick. So first off, we'll take a look at the Lullaby card. And this art is pretty cool. It's like, it gives like an old school feel, like something that was drawn in the style of what older cards from older sets look like. So let's just take a look at its effect. And first off, you gotta pay 2,000 life points then declare one monster name your opponent looks through their deck and if they have the declared card they reveal one of them and choose one of these effects for you to apply one add their revealed monster to your hand or two special summon their revealed monster to your field in attack position ignoring its summoning conditions so obviously this card will be best in mirror matches but it's also good if you know what deck they're playing and you could like potentially screw them up in game two or game three or something so yeah this card we've never really seen before, which is pretty cool. It's kind of like a change of heart as well as exchange, except more stuff you got to do and you got to guess the card. So yeah, I do see a lot of people teching this in their decks or putting them in their side decks potentially because like I said before, it'll probably be useful in mirror matches. So next up, we've got Tribute Burial, a normal spell card. And what it does is once during this turn, if you would tribute summon a monster that requires two tributes, you can banish one monster from each graveyard and tribute summon that monster without tributing. Also, you cannot special summon monsters for the rest of this turn. Okay, I like how they added that last part to it that you can't special summon because otherwise this shit would be broken. Like, you don't gotta tribute anything on the field, you just gotta remove from play one monster in your graveyard and one in your opponent. So you could like potentially screw up your opponent if they're counting on their specific monster to be in their graveyard 
And also, I do see a lot of decks that are super into banishing now, so you banishing one card from your graveyard could help you out later on. So yeah, this card is pretty dope. It's like double summon, except we've never seen anything like this before, so it's pretty cool. I like this card. I like this card a lot. Lastly, I want to take a look at Neutron Blast. This is crazy. This is like fan service type thing, because I've always used this attack with Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon in the show. So what Neutron Blast does is, you could target one fusion summoned blue eyes ultimate dragon you control. This turn it can make three freaking attacks during each battle phase. Also, if it attacks your opponent's cards and effects cannot be activated until the end of the damage step. This is crazy. This is freaking it's like it's a one turn kill, obviously, if you can like set up your field correctly. But it's freaking overkill because 4,500 times three, that's 9,000. 13,500 I can math. So yeah, you're potentially you can do up to 13,500 damage to your opponent. That's that's crazy. What the hell? So yeah, this card I, I want this. I want this just because it's a freaking neutron blast. So yeah, that's pretty much the main gist of the Yu-Gi-Oh stuff I wanted to cover this week. I'm pretty excited for the set. Oh, and um, this comes out. The Rivals of the Pharaoh Duelist Pack comes out September 16, 2016, so way at the end of summer. But I just can't believe that I missed out on this announcement that we're gonna get this in the TCG because in the OCG, it's already released, I think. It was released on June 4, so yeah, it was released already like a couple weeks ago. So yeah, what cards are you excited for from the set? It's crazy. Alright, let's move on to my Q&A, the first edition. First edition, the first time I'm doing this in any of my videos ever. So yeah, I got four questions right here. First off, Kevin asks, what is your favorite card from the latest set? So for us, the latest set was Shiny Victories, and my favorite card from that set hands down has to be Red Eyes Toon Dragon. Just because it is epic, it's a Pegasus card, it's Red Eyes. I'm pretty sure I got Red Eyes in my like profile picture for this channel, so there's no other option, no other option. All right, Mark Vincent Francisco asked, have you ever been to the Philippines? Yes, I have actually twice in my lifetime. First time in the winter of 2001 when I was like six years old and summer of 2008. So it's been like eight years since the last time I was there. I'm looking forward. Hopefully I can go there after I graduate from college. I graduate June 2017, so June of next year. So yeah, just hopefully next year summer I can go to the Philippines. Pretty excited. All right, and Sushi Plox or Sushi Please asks me, do you have a deck? Yeah, I got a few, but they haven't been touched in a while. Like, I still have my Agent deck and my Frog Monarch deck from high school. And when I was a kid, all I played pretty much was Chaos. A Chaos deck with, like, Black Luster Soldier. I remember that's, like, all, like, our friends played. We played Chaos. One of us um, had the BLS, and then other people got the Chaos Emperor Dragon. My other friend back then happened to make an entire Cyber End Dragon deck, and I was, I was just so jealous because I wanted that too. So, yeah. But I do have a few decks. I just haven't touched them in a long time, so I, I might put up deck lists if y'all are interested in that. They're obviously not competitive anymore because they're not updated at all, so yeah. Alright, last question for this video. Ryan Dave asks, what is your top favorite Yu-Gi-Oh card? Now, I had to think a long time for this question, but if I had to pick one, just one card, it would have to be Marshmallow. The first time I seen this guy, I was like, that's my spirit animal or dual spirit or whatever. That's my dual spirit right here because you know how Jaden has Wink Karibo, Chaz got those Ojamas. I remember that was like a big thing for Yu-Gi-Oh! GX the dual spirits and everything. But I do know they had a few in the first season, like Yugi's is obviously a dark magician and etc. etc. So yeah, thanks for asking questions you guys. I'm always looking for more to answer, so just comment those down below if you want. And now it's time for my favorite segment of this video, Shameless Plug! I pointed in the right direction, so first off. If you haven't noticed the pattern, I reveal winners of pack opening giveaways every other Tuesdays. So every two weeks, so last week I did, so I won't again till next Tuesday. So there's a lot of open stuff right now. So first off, from Friday of June 10, it's still open, my winner lose a video. From Sunday of June 12, we got my Order of Chaos pack opening video. Tuesday, June 14, the Special Edition Generation Forces. Friday, June 17, my really random pack opening video, round one, part three. And Sunday, June 19, I finally started my Summer 16 giveaway. Go join that shit if you haven't yet, it's gonna be epic. And also on my Pokemon channel, I still got the monthly giveaway open, the Manaphy Mythical Collection box. So if you guys haven't joined that yet, and you want to, go ahead. And also on the 18th, I did a blister pack opening where I'm giving away the promo from that opening. So I'll link that too in the description box below. 
and almost forgot but yesterday I started my monthly OCG booster box segment so yeah I opened up a Legend of Blue Eyes box I'm giving away one of the foils I pulled so go peep that if you haven't yet and yeah awesome we got through all those giveaways how many is that freaking one two three four five eight open giveaways across two of my channels so yeah <sighs> a lot of stuff to just manage so I hope you guys enjoyed this video what do you guys think of Josh and Geh do you think we'll get it pretty soon what are you looking forward to in the next duelist pack that we'll be getting in September and also always looking for questions so if you guys got any questions just leave them in the comments below how has this guys week been let me know and I hope you guys enjoyed the video thank you guys for watching peace thanks for watching episode 3 of Yu-Gi-Oh! weekly every Wednesday and I'll see you guys next time all right bye also, I forgot to say, next Wednesday I'm going to be driving, so I probably won't be able to do this, but I'm actually going to go to uh, Frankenson, so if I'm allowed to take pictures or anything, I'll make sure to show you guys that instead of you know, weekly or in, in place of any news that happens during that week, and I'll show you guys what I get, so yeah, check in next week, so yeah, for real, bye.